WordPress. So we're going to go over a workshop about WordPress um, and just kind of going over what it is and um, uh, just the very general uh, over, you know, oversight of, of the platform itself. And then next week we'll go over more advanced um, uh, functionality of WordPress and why you know, it's, it's broadly used. Um, but just kind of just in general, um, WordPress is an open source software you can use to create websites and apps. And um, open source just mainly represents um, when you create some kind of um, software and you and it's community based so um, it's it's a community that um, keeps adding on to it um, they meet up and 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 just gives it out for public use so you can actually take that software or tools um, and customize it yourself um, so that's what's really great about open source obviously the the free aspect is really good because you don't have to pay anything um, and uh, it's also built on PHP, which PHP is um, um, also um, open source and just gives it that function, that, that feature of like not having to depend on a company to um, continue collaborating on the project because you have so many uh, developers and, and teams that keep contributing to it and makes that platform um, just keep, um, being alive per se as much as possible so that's what's really great about open source projects um, so it's trusted around the world so 33 percent of the web uses wordpress so it's little things like blogs to very large news sites online uh, and every day uh, wordpress is, is gaining so much momentum that um, even applications um, are using their their platform as well so it's not just basic websites that um, you can use for it which is really nice. Um, it has very powerful features. So um, the things that they mentioned on their website is, is true, but you can always um, mess these things up. So for example, like uh, customizable design, it's SEO friendly, it's responsive, uh, it has a responsive mobile site. So, so what they're saying here is out, what comes out of the box type deal um, is high performant. You can manage on the go. So in other words, you have an app where you can um, contribute to it. Um, it again, it's, it has high security, but depending on how you host it and all that. So all of these things can totally be derailed uh, depending on who's developing, who's maintaining the site too. Um, it's got really powerful media management, which I'll go over. And, um, and it's easy and accessible. So like one of the things that we're, we've been talking about is like being ADA compliant and all that. So out of the box, it already has those, those um, features. Um, but you can, again, if, if you don't know correctly how to develop or you don't keep in mind the, um, the accessibility portion, you can easily, you know, just derail these, these things. And of course, that's with anything, but um, this is just what comes out of the box with, with WordPress. Um, the great thing, like I mentioned, it's open source and it's so, so the community is like a big aspect about this. Um, so it, they actually have a Slack channel, uh, or uh, sorry, a Slack team, uh, which you can um, uh, join in and you can actually see um, their progress for all the feature updates that they do. People ask random questions. They have different channels for different plugins. So it's a really great community. Um, you can actually see them, you know, like, you know, it's like you're, it's like you're there kind of when you're seeing them. Um, talk to each other and all that stuff. So it's really cool community around the world. Um, that's why, you know, uh, I chose the, the word, the word camp project, um, because those are real. They actually do happen around the world and there's great communities that, that just get together and, and, um, you know, either like when you're looking for work and you're looking, uh, to just improve your, your skills, whether it's just development or it's just design or content creation, SEO, like there's so many aspects to web design that's not just developer based. Um, so that's what's really great about WordPress. It kind of brings all of those types of um, uh, teams together, which is really cool. So what, so what WordPress looks like is just, it, it's basically a website. So, you know, these, these are some sites that, that I helped build and um, 
they're, they look like any site. So you're not gonna see like, oh, that's a WordPress website. There, there's, there's no visual indication that a site is WordPress unless you go into the code and you can see um, some tags that, that tell you that it's WordPress, but visually you're not gonna tell that a website is WordPress. Um, when, when it's used um, outside of their, their core theme, um, that uh, being, you know, just to clarify that. Uh, so these are sites that, again, they're, 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 they have a custom design, but we built WordPress um, behind it. That's what we did for AAA key, mini storage. That's what we did for Bill Miller. And one of the cool things about the Bill Miller one was um, I thought it'd be cool to have a different um, homepage every time you visit. So if you go in the morning, you'll see like the breakfast, like, a, you know, just a big call to action uh, picture of like breakfast tacos. And then the menu, um, when you scroll down, you would see the menu for breakfast. So every, every time you go in and see the site, um, depending on the time, it will, it will change for, for, that, um, for that menu or that, uh, what, you sh what we recommend you eating kind of thing. Um, so WordPress, in, in essence, is a content management system. It does way more than that, but that's, that's really like the, the biggest component to it. So it's the, the management portion of it. Um, so you'll note it, you'll regard that term as CMS. Uh, so CMS is a key word there. So it's content management system. Um, so be able to um, get access to that. It has an admin portal where you can manage that content. Um, this is what the login uh, uh, form looks like. This is what all of them have. Um, once you log in, you'll be able to see the dashboard. So again, this is the admin portal. Um, on the on the dashboard view is where you um, just get a glance at uh, you know the content that you have. If there if you have any plugins, like for example, on this one, you can see on the right side, we use Ga uh, Google Analytics, and there's a plugin installed for it. Uh, so one of their plugin features is that on the dashboard, it gives you a, a little graph as far as like um, the, the, the latest statistics for that site, which is really nice. That way you don't have to go to another site to see that. You can just kind of see it there uh, when you log in, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing too is their, their, their latest admin has the, um, the navigation on the left, which you can also collapse, um, but that's where you're gonna be able to see most of the options there. Um, so you have the dashboard. I'm gonna go over what the post media and pages are. Um, you can go to settings to like change the, the, the site name. Um, and there's other plugins that are listed here. Um, we're not gonna go over them till next week, but, um, but just to get, give you an idea, this is the admin portal navigation. Um, if you were to go to the media section, this is where you can upload um, what, what it represents, the media. So these are things like photos, PDF files. Um, you could do videos as well. I, I do not recommend uploading videos um, to the media section. I recommend using um, a service like YouTube or Vimeo where you upload your videos there and then you display them using their embedded formats. Um, when you, when you deal with video, I'm thinking, and of course, I'm thinking of videos that are like over uh, 30 seconds, um, you know, so especially like if you're going to um, want someone to see a commercial that you created or uh, a workshop like this, you know, that might be, you know, an hour or more, um, you put that in YouTube that way, um, th one, they take care of the hosting for the video, and then two, um, the streaming is a lot better and it doesn't take up resources of your website. Um, another thing too is when you upload photos, you um, WordPress automatically organizes it for you. Um, so the directories are, um, they put everything inside of the WP content directory. Sorry, one second. No kind of
Uh, I'm not sure if you, if I understand, sorry, Francine, as far as track time, like, um, sorry. Um, so in media, like, so when we're, um, if you put a video on there, are you able to track like how long they're watching and if it's like an actual oh. view? Oh, like on YouTube, like how long someone watched the video? Yeah. But I mean, in YouTube, I know you can, but oh. if you do it in here, if you add the media in here, can you? Uh, no, no. So okay. here is, it would just be a file. Yeah. So if you were okay. to put a file there, yeah, there, there would be you. The only way to do that is, is if you have some kind of plugin or you write the software yourself that does that. Um, so okay. yeah, I highly recommend for something like that. Um, there, uh, there are tools that, um, that you can track that you can track one, like how much they've seen, or for example, like we've built a platform where kind of like an e-learning platform where we wanted the, the, the users to go through a series of videos so they couldn't continue to the next thing until they watched one completely. You can find out exactly when they actually finished the video and then they moved on to the next. And also you can control like if they, uh, uh, that they can't pause or, or sorry, they cannot like skip forward kind of deal as well. But you didn't do that in, in media, you just did that in your uh, coding? So there's a plugin that, that you can do that. Um, I can actually, oh. I'll, I'll actually um, include it for next week's, um, since I'm gonna go over like uh, more advanced features of WordPress and plugins, which is one of them. Um, so I can include that one to show you what, what that does. Cause it's really cool, especially for educational purposes. Um, not only are you able to embed YouTube videos and track what the user does with them, um, but also like slideshows. So like if you want them to do slides or within the video, which is really, which is the best part is that when they reach like a certain time frame of the video, you, you can ask them a question or, or create a quiz as they go. So that way if like, you know, they watch like, I don't know, like a minute of it. And then you just want to make sure that they understood that portion. You write a quick quiz and, and you can, not only does it, the user answer the, the, the question, but you also get reports of that. Okay. But that's yeah, all be programming. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but so yeah, by default, the media section is just where you can store um, photos, PDF files, um, things like, I think you can, might be able to get away with like Word docs, things like that. Um, but when it comes to like just random files, it, it won't let you upload it because of that security built in. So it won't, so if you have like some like random extension for a file, it, it just will not upload that file. Okay. Um, the next section is the pages. So this, this is like, you know, so every website you go to, you, they have pages. So you have like about um, the team or services, the contact page, all of that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that's what re this represents. Um, so I'm going to show you what posts are in a little bit. But just to make sure that uh, pages, um, you cannot categorize them or anything like that. What you can do is that you can nest them. So you can actually have like a parent page and child pages uh, along the way. I don't, I've never tried the limitation, uh, but I'm, maybe, maybe it limits up to four or something like that. Um, but, but yeah, so you're able to nest pages as well. Then posts are really for blogs. So this is what, this, this is actually what WordPress was. It was a blogging platform. Um, so when you would think of WordPress, you would think of a blog. Um, so really what they had were posts and posts are just basically what it is. It's a post. So when you go to, I don't know if you guys follow any post or sorry, any blogs or anything like that or podcasts and all that. So every time they add new content, it's, it's considered a, a, a post. Um, and that's what this section is. So here within posts, uh, which is really a blog, you can categorize them. So you can create categories um, and, with, and, and within each post, you can also tag uh, them with like just random keywords. And really tags are like what we know as like hashtags today for like when you write a, um, what do you call it? A, uh, a post on Instagram or on Facebook and all that. Those, you know, all of those things are what you tag those posts on same concept here so you don't have categories and tags with 
pages, you only have that within the posts section. Since there are two different types of content, right? So posts are for blog format, and pages are more like content type uh, uh, pages, like your homepage, about, services, things like that. Anybody have questions so far? Okay. Um, for, uh, cool. All right, so, what if not it exit out of this stuff? Okay. So for posts and pages, uh, one of the features you can do is um, include a, is what they call a featured image. Um, so the featured image is when, so especially when you're in a, um, when you're in a blog, and, you, and you're seeing like, when you go to a news website and you're seeing like just a list of articles, um, the thing that stands out is probably the picture, right? So that's what the featured image is. So you basically assign a picture to that post. You could also do it to pages, but really it's more recognizable on, for, for blog posts. You assign a featured image. So that way when you're in that, um, that list view, you can differentiate each article by the featured image. And that's what that, assigned thing is for them. So that's already built in. Um, each post and, and page will have some basic settings assigned to it. Things like um, if it's published, you want to you want to not publish it yet, so you want to set it as a draft, you can do that. Um, also when you have a, a team of collaborators within the site, you can have their role be only able to create, so like drafts. And then when they're ready to like uh, publish them, they can save it um, to, uh, to be pending review. So that way you as an admin or as an editor, you can go in there and, and approve that post or page, and then you can publish it yourself. Um, so that's what those statuses are. Um, you can also hide those posts and pages by changing the visibility. So you can actually password protect them uh, within those the basic settings. So I don't know, just, Thinking out loud, like if you have some promotion for that organization, uh, maybe for the rodeo, and um, you wanted um, people to get an address to like some you know secret meetup or something like that, you can password protect it and email that password to only those certain users or something like that. Those are the things that um, you could do, or just a page that's not ready to be launched yet, but you want people to see it, like a certain amount of people, they would need a password to access it. You could use you can use that feature for that. Uh, you, for post, for pub, the publish date really matters more for posts than pages because um, when you view articles, when you, blog, when you view a blog, um, they're usually ordered from the latest to oldest. Um, so the publish date matters there more. So here's where you can edit the date. Um, the next two things that you see is that the readability and SEO, that's part of a Yoast, uh, sorry, a plugin for SEO. I'll, I'll go over more in depth in what that is next uh, for next week. Um, but really, uh, when, when you're doing web design outside of WordPress, right, just like not even talking about WordPress, when you're doing web design um, and web development, SEO should be um, highly respected as far as how you create your content um, and have some kind of strategy for it. Um, that way, your site can be found online um, more organically. Um, that's, that's, that's what, um, that plugin does. It helps you make sure that your site has, or that page or post has good readability content. Um, and the, and it has like great, um, uh, tips, um, things like that. So it's a really great tool, but I'll, again, I'll go over that, um, since it's more, a little bit more advanced. And of course you can trash it and update it, things like that. <laughs> Um, this is what the editor looked like before. So in other words, when you create a new post or you create a new page, um, tip the, you know, the typical thing for either one would be your title. So in this case, I'm creating a, I'm editing a page called careers. And then on the right, on the right side, this is the editor. Um, it was, so, um, before WordPress five, um, they used, uh, an editor called tiny MCE. And I'm gonna go over what that is. And also, um, instead of showing you um, how to edit the blog, uh, sorry, the posts and pages uh, 
the, the way the old school way was, I'm gonna show you what the new way is. That way you're familiar with what's, what's modern today. But some sites are still not updated, so that's why I wanted to show you what this looks like. All right, so um, this term is, is, is um, called WYSIWYG, and you've definitely seen it everywhere. Like there's, there's no way you could have um, been online and not, and not either seen this term or interacted with it. You just don't know what it's called, okay? And I'll, and I'll show you what that is in a bit. So it stands for what you see is what you get. That's what WYSIWYG uh, stands for. And before WordPress or before all these modern tools to, uh, to build um, websites, we would have tools like this to, do, uh, to build them, which is using Macromedia Flash, Macromedia Dreamweaver, which some of you guys are still using. I definitely don't want y'all to use it anymore. Uh, and then um, there's also um, a Microsoft's version of, of creating, some, uh, creating a website. So these are very... Uh, like I, I, to me, they're ancient. To me, they're ancient. Um, a flash, for example, is like non-existent. Also, um, you know, died. I think they use it for animation now, but it's definitely not a tool for web development anymore. And Microsoft's, I'm not sure. Dreamweaver is still available today, obviously. Um, but um, the point I'm bringing is that they would have a way for you to build your site as you're seeing it. That's, that's, that's really what uh, WYSIWYG is, right? So what you see is what you get. Um, there is now services today, and I, I'm sure you guys probably, if you're, if you're Googling or uh, doing um, a lot of things online for development, you're probably gonna run into these ads. So one of them is called Squarespace. Squarespace is a service where you can build your own website. Uh, another one that's competitive to them is called Wix. And again, they're just, their, their website builders, that's, that's what they are. Uh, I like Will Ferrell, that's why I put this, he, he did a little ad about it, it's pretty funny. Um, and then there's um, a, you know, new ways to um, take over this, uh, what you see is what you get format. So um, there's, a, there's a great, um, basically like a content platform called Medium. And of course, there's WordPress. So when you think of what you see is what you get um, within WordPress, so now we're, talk now we're going back to WordPress, um, this is what the editor looks like. So you can edit your title, but the main thing that I want you to focus on is the center portion where you see the text where it says, welcome to WordPress, this is your first post, edit or delete it, then start writing. That, per that portion right there, that's the, that's the editor. Right, so, and this is what I mean that you've probably interacted with something like this, where you can actually highlight the text, bold it, indent it, add um, some bullet points, create a, a center it, right align it, that kind of thing, okay? That's a WYSIWYG editor there. But if you notice, this is what, when I save that post that I just, that we're just seeing right now, and then see it um, visually, this is what you see. And if you notice, it's not really the same thing. So um, I'm seeing on the right-hand side, I have a header on the top. I have like this right column on the right. Um, at the bottom, I see like some kind of comment section. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, so this, this WYSIWYG editor, what you see is what you get. It's not, you don't really see what you get. So that's, that's really the important piece that the editor that was there before, you're not able to see it visually what it looks like now. Um, so um, a, a long time ago in one of the word camps was in San Francisco, um, they had the idea to do inline editing. So when you actually highlight a portion of the text, it would pop up this little section where you can uh, do those same um, functionalities, so like bold, creating, creating a bold, adding a link, that kind of thing, um, inline. So without an editor per se to do that. And they even had this idea of, of kind of like um, creating these uh, sections of content. So instead of having just one editor, you can add 
different types. So like in this, in this, so this is like a screenshot or sorry, like a prototype they showed. Not, this is, was not anything working. This is, this is a long time ago. Then Medium came out uh, not too long ago. So um, it's a free platform, you can sign up for free. And their version of what you see is what you get is um, when you're editing or when you're creating, they have this little um, plus sign. So when you're gonna add content, you click on it and then you can add different types of content. So you can add a picture, you can add um, a video, piece of code, a line break, things like that. That was their, that was their twist to it. And then LinkedIn, I don't know if you guys have uh, signed up, if you haven't signed up, um, they're also getting very big on social media. They're, they, they kicked off big time um, last year. But again, if you're gonna create content within their platform, um, you see that same concept, right? You see a little plus sign, and you can add things like image, video, slides, links, and again, code snippet. And now WordPress, this is the new Gutenberg editor. Okay, so um, this, is, this is what's the latest. It's called the Gutenberg editor. So when you click the little plus sign, you actually get different types of content. All right, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like just in a quick live demo. All right, so this is me on the latest uh, WordPress uh, version. I'm creating a new blog post, right? And then remember how I was showing you this is, it shows this little plus signs and, and I'll explain what they mean, um, but they, they recognize them as blocks, right? So I can actually start without clicking that little plus sign, I can write, you know, my first paragraph. Okay, and then remember that little editor. Notice that it doesn't like. Notice that everything is is separated, so it's not. I'm not controlling the whole body of content, and that's really the biggest change in the previous uh, WordPress version. You all of your content, all the body of your content was tied into this one editor. Now everything's broken up into, into what type of content it is, which is a huge, huge upgrade. So actually this text, right now it's a paragraph, but I can actually switch it to a heading tag. And now it's a heading tag, which is really nice. And, um, and then let me see what other types. And then I can add different types of content. So I can add images. I have some in my media library. Let's see this one. You can add caption. So, so notice how this, is, this knows that this is a paragraph, right? So it gives me options for that. This knows that this is a heading tag, right? So like it's like our H1, H2, all of that. So it gives me options for that, right? So I want to change it to an H4, that kind of thing. And then this is an image content. So it knows that if I want to write a line, the image, if I want to add a caption, so logo, um, you know, that's, that's what's really, you could, you could not do this without a plugin or without some custom um, uh, programming, you, this was not possible. So again, everything that you're seeing right here is out of the box from, from WordPress. Another great, great thing about that, and I'll go over a little bit, is um, you can have it has color settings. So if I want to change the color, and if you even gives you tips here, so uh, I can't really see it here. So this color combination may be hard for people to read. Try using brighter background color and or darker text color. Uh, yep, that didn't that didn't really help. Yeah, so I like that better. So anyway, so these are really cool things that you can do now with not installing any additional plugins and whatnot. So that's what Gutenberg is. Um, so like I mentioned, they're blocks, right? So every content is a block. 
um, identifying and adding meaning to content. Uh, this is done through blocks and block context. Um, just like I was showing you the paragraph, you can change the font size, background color, text color, and then you can add custom CSS classes, which is nice. Um, the image, um, you can um, change the, the size, you can add custom width and height. If you want to link it to something, you can do that in the property pane as well. Um, another cool thing is that you can add columns. I don't think, yeah, I didn't show that, but you can add columns, uh, which is really nice. Let me do that real quick. So I'm going to go under layout and do columns. So a really good thing is like if you want to say like, All right. Again, this might, for some of you, might seem like no big deal, but um, this, this is a big deal. And in, in as far as like just uh, managing content in WordPress. And you can also change um, the column size. Another cool thing is doing covers. Um, so it's kind of like our hero section, um, but within content, you could do something real easily. Yeah, I guess it's a little easier to show you. So here, if I want to say like, um, uh, John Ward. It didn't win the best logo, but just pretend it did. Um, Here we go. So cover, so I'm gonna add a picture. Let's see this one. And then since every block has different properties, I can go in here and change like that overlay color. Let me just do something crazier. You guys get the point? <laughs> yes. Yeah, again, this is out of the box. So really, really cool advance that they've made. Um, and then this widgets have existed for years. So there's nothing new to widgets, but widgets are um, um, basically, um, like if you have like a section that you want to show all the pages, that's a widget. If you want to uh, have a section where um, you show them the, a, a list of menus, uh, if you wanted a section where you show all the categories for the blog, you, those are all pre-made widgets from WordPress out of the box. Um, but you can always integrate widgets within blocks, which is nice. These are all, so they're, so they, from out of the box from uh, WordPress, the, with the new Gutenberg editor, they have a lot of these content types, right? So you have like image, you can create an image gallery, the cover that I mentioned, you can include a video. Again, a video, you want to integrate it from like a YouTube source, um, audio, um, columns like we, we saw. Um, you can add a, a um, uh, actually that'd be a good one. Um, you want to add a, HTML block and write HTML. So I can say things like, um, let's just say I had a script. Um, 
and I wanted to alert one, something like that. And of course, when I preview this, this would throw an alert, which you don't want to do, but um, you kind of get the point. Yeah, so that's got a really great um, set of different types of content you can add. Um, you can also create blog templates. These are, this is getting more advanced, um, but you can also create templates. So um, this basically gives, um, aims to give developers the ability to define and protect, um, also gives users the ability to, di to directly edit the information. Uh, so what this means is if one of, like let's say from all of these content types, you had a project that you needed a very specific type of content for them, um, you can create your own type. That's, this, is, this is what I'm talking about, which is really nice. So in other words, when they're gonna go in and select the content type, they would see your custom type. And you can have an icon for it. Uh, you can have, obviously you would name what type of content it is. Um, that obviously would be something you would develop, right? Um, so just in this example, um, oh, here I'm just adding a title, um, but what this represents is like this whole section, like book, the, the title, sorry, the, the, the book title, the author, the image, the description, all of that would be like a content type. Uh, so one of the questions is like, is Gutenberg an editor replacement? And so, and that way you guys know is that um, Gutenberg is trying to actually become a, what you see is what you get, right? So it's, it's cause again, if we go back to what I was saying before, uh, when you're like editing content and when you're previewing it or seeing the, the output of it, it's never really exactly what you see. So Gutenberg is aiming to actually show you and, and visually edit the content um, the way it should be displayed. So as you're editing, it's you're editing what you're actually seeing. That's, that's, what they're, that's their aim towards um, what they're doing there. Um, so, so yeah, so again, this is the Gutenberg editor, right? Like what we've been uh, working on now. Uh, and this is a typical structure for a website. So you have your header, navigation, typically there's a, a sidebar and then you have your main content and then your footer. And this editor content, or uh, the Gutenberg editor, is still located here, right? It's still the body of content. So whatever you create, it's still there. Um, but the idea, or at least the, what, what I'm foreseeing uh, WordPress doing with Gutenberg is to overtake the entire website, okay? That way you can actually edit everything. So right now, if we go back to what Gutenberg is, remember they're just blocks of content, right? So they're called blocks. So that's, that's where those blocks ex exist. And later down the road, we're gonna see, again, they've, they've never mentioned this, uh, but I'm just already seeing where they're heading with this, is where you can create blocks throughout the entire site. So your header would be a block, your footer would be a block, your sidebar would be a block, et cetera, et cetera. So everything is a block. All right, so yeah, so that's basically a quick uh, look at what WordPress is. And let me see, stop sharing. Yeah. Um, and do y'all have any questions? To access all those features, it has to be paid, correct? No, so everything that I've shown is out of the box. So you could today, um, you can either sign up at, um, so the easiest way is you can go to um, wordpress.com, sign up, just like Facebook, so it's, it's free, and then start using the, those features that I mentioned, okay? Um, if you wanna host it yourself, you can either, um, for example, one of the services I really like is, um, they're, they're more high-end, uh, but it's called the WP Engine, and you can uh, pay them to host the, the WordPress site for you, and you can do everything that I said. A cheap way is like the one I mentioned, like you sign up on wordpress.com, or there's some, have, have y'all used um, a map before? 
I have not. Okay, so in order to run WordPress, you need a PHP server. And um, you, if you have a Mac, and there's also a WAMP version, so in other words, for Windows, if you install this on your computer, you're basically installing a server on your computer. And when you install it, you can then install WordPress inside of that. And then you can run WordPress locally on your computer. No one would see it, but you'd be able to use those features. So everything that I've been showing uh, today as far as this goes, as long as you can get somewhere to run WordPress, you're able to do what I'm doing here. So one way is signing up on wordpress.com, creating your own blog, per, uh, going to a service that manages WordPress sites. So in other words, you pay them monthly to have to, for them to host your WordPress website or installing a web server on your computer and, um, and, and spinning up a WordPress uh, platform on, the, on your computer. And if you're interested in any of those, you can always Slack me and I can, I can help you get set up. But yes, once, one, either way, so whether you get it on your computer, you're paying a service to run it, or you sign up on wordpress.com, either way, at the end of the day, you're gonna get something like this where you can, at least the latest version, right? Um, where you can use those features that I've, I've been talking about. Okay. Oh, and I wasn't sharing my screen, was I? But Sorry, uh, so I was talking about wordpress.com. This is wordpress.com where you sign up. This is WP Engine where you can um, sign uh, pay them monthly. They're, 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 they're more high end, so I think their, their lowest price is 35 a month. Uh, go, you have things like um, GoDaddy, they're probably a lot cheaper. And then you have Map, where you can install Map on your computer and then run um, WordPress. Um, and also, there's this to you. Local by Flywheel is a new tool um, where if you down, so it's similar to MAP, except for a lot easier. So probably if you're looking for easiness, um, download local, I'll, I'll post these on, on Slack. Um, and of course this is recorded as well, so you'll get a recording of this. Um, but if you download this tool, you'll be able to spin up a WordPress website. It's still local on your computer. So in other words, no one's gonna be able to see it, um, but you're able to, run WordPress on your computer locally. 